Designing lots of features into your parts is essential. But in a top-level assembly, is all that detail necessary? At that high level, all that detail can put unwanted strain on your assembly, causing performance issues. Sometimes, all that detail isn't needed. There are many tools in SOLIDWORKS to help combat assembly performance issues. Today, I'm going to focus on one such tool, D-Feature. This assembly is complete with all the detail needed to make each part. But in using this assembly elsewhere, I'm only concerned with certain aspects, like will it fit in the space allotted and how will I mount it? This is where D-Feature comes in. Activating the D-Feature tool, there are two methods. In this example, we'll use simplified geometry. Clicking Next takes us into a four-step process. The first step allows us to remove any unneeded components. There are options to remove internal components or even small components based on assembly size. I'm not concerned with having the internal components here. If there are a bunch of components selected but you want to keep some of them, there is an option to select ones to retain. I also have the option to manually select components. A section view can be used to more easily see difficult to reach areas. A display option allows different ways to view the components to help ensure I got what I wanted. Moving on to step two, motion can be maintained from the assembly, if needed. We don't need any now, more on that later. So we'll move on to step three. In step three, I can choose features I want to keep. Typically mounting holes are a good choice here. Auto select options are also available, but I'm gonna manually choose by selecting all the faces I want to maintain. Hitting next, SolidWorks will then remove internal details and a preview of the defeatured model so far pops up. It is in sync with the main model. Step four is the last chance to try and get my desired defeatured model. I can select remaining items to remove that were not automatically selected. Here I want to remove the fillet. Selecting a face of the fillet, I have the option to choose the face, the feature, body, or component. Once I've made my selections, hitting next finishes off the preview. If it is what I want, I can save it off as a new document with the option to maintain a link to the original file or just store the settings to use later. I can even publish directly to 3D Content Central to share. Saving as a new document, the defeatured settings show up in the feature manager of the original assembly model, and the new part model displays a defeatured feature in its design tree, a much simpler model to use in top level assemblies. Okay, now let's rewind. Back to this original assembly, there is some motion we'd like to maintain. Running this defeature option again, this time I need to keep that internal gear. On the motion step, I can create groups. This allows me to have motion between the different groups. Carefully selecting the components for each group and selecting Create Group adds it to the group list. And Mates to Maintain are listed below. Moving on to step three, features are already selected that are needed to maintain the remaining mates. More can also be added if necessary. This time, completing the feature creates a defeatured assembly with virtual components, but with the motion intact. Now let's try out the other option, Silhouette Method. There are several methods within this one for simplifying the components or bodies based on outlines. The full grill assembly has lots of components and subassemblies with lots of detail. Let's simplify the support frame subassembly. Choosing the silhouette method, our steps are a little different. Here, we create groups that we would like to simplify in the same manner, then choose the simplification method for that group. We'll start by selecting the components we want to copy the original geometry, typically critical components or ones we want to mate to. Here, none is chosen as the simplification method. Adding the first group splits the screen, showing the progress of the D feature. Next, I'll choose the planks. There's an option to select identical components to aid in the process. 
For these components, I'll choose the bounding box method. There's even an option to create a single body from the selections. Adding the group shows the progress in the preview window. Next, I'll choose the wheels and use the tight fit method to maintain the holes in the center. Then, the axle, and I'll use cylinder method. To show the last method, polygon outline, I'll choose the cross brace. This creates an extruded polygon that fits around the outline of the selection. For orientation, automatic has been used so far, but other faces or planes can be used to help define the simplification. A highlight process bodies checkbox helps me see if I got everything I want. When complete, hitting next takes me to a similar property manager to the first method to complete my D feature, with one addition. With the silhouette method, I can choose to create a new configuration within this model, and even include top-level reference geometry. If I need to share externally, I can still save as a part to protect my IP. Completing this command gives me a D-featured child configuration that can be used in my top-level assemblies. It is possible to switch to the simplified configuration in the top level assembly, but it's best to create these simplified configurations before adding to the top level to avoid possible mate or dangling reference issues. With the methods and saving options in the D feature tool, it is a great way to simplify geometry for use in larger assemblies or to protect your IP if sharing externally. Check out the rest of our video series on working with assemblies and give us a call if you'd like to learn more.